Joe Biden has been warned. A bunch of liberal columnists are urging the president to boot Kamala off the ticket. But the Veep's insane cheerleaders in the press are threatening to take down his campaign if he does it. I would be very careful, President Biden, about getting rid of Kamala Harris because we will not support you. What? If Biden gets rid of Kamala Harris and inserts someone else, he will lose the black vote. I don't want to white explain, but you might be underestimating the black community Thank voter. You. I yeah, think I am. I think some of the soft bigotry is showing in the progressives. Women always have to work harder than men. I don't have to tell you two that. But women of color, it, with power, I think she's threatening. Ah. But Joe may have no choice because top Democrats keep throwing her under the bus. Is Vice President Kamala Harris the best running mate for this president? He thinks so, and that's what matters. And by the way, you think so? she's very politically astute. You think she is the, the best running mate, though? She's the vice president of the United States. So when people say to me, well, why isn't she doing this or that? I said, because she's the vice president. That's the job description. You don't do that much. What do you make of Speaker Pelosi's answer there? I mean, there didn't seem to be anything wrong uh, with that answer. That's President Biden's choice, and I think she's an excellent running mate uh, for President Biden. Okay. Shannon, would you like to white explain the issue here? If, if she does not appear on the ticket, will black voters abandon the Biden campaign? I don't know, but they, there's polling showing they have been in some ways because they don't think he's delivered on a lot of things that they were hoping he would deliver on. So that's probably his bigger problem. But when I heard about this, I thought about, do you guys remember getting this memo August of 2020 called We Have Her Back? It was before she was named to the ticket, but her name was, she's probably or possibly going to be the VP. And it was a memo from all of these groups to the heads of news divisions saying, we're watching everything that you do. Ooh. Don't use pictures of women that look angry. Don't talk about them being ambitious as a negative thing. Don't talk about their appearance. Don't stereotype. And it goes on in here to say, we know you've been working in your newsrooms for diversity. And so we're going to hold you to account in the way that you cover her. Mm. This new thing gives me very much shades of we're watching you. And if you get this wrong... We're going to call you out. It's like the impeachment threat that they right. sent to the news chiefs. Greg, that was a kiss of death by Nancy. Uh, I don't know if Kamala's going to be too happy with yeah, that. Yeah, not a ringing endorsement. She's basically saying that, you know, she does a capable job because it's a really easy job to do. That's like saying I prefer a house plant over a pet because you don't have to feed it and it won't wet the carpet. But uh, <laughs> I heard the view is going on a hunger strike but only between commercials. <laughs> but, uh, I love Democrat on Democrat action. They should create a category for that on Pornhub. And it's good to see Dems calling out everyone else racist who are also Dems who will get their taste of that medicine because now the monster is devouring themselves. It's like they now realize that, wow, they elected the oldest, whitest, perhaps racist president ever, Joe Biden, because they'd rather win and stick to their own principles. And now they're going to do this. It's too late. You guys already threw her aside before. That's right. So do you think she stays on the ticket, Pierce? Well, if you're the Republicans, you hope she does. You right. hope that Biden and Kamala Harris are the duo that go powering into the next election. Uh, the president who appears to have completely lost his marbles <laughs> and a vice president who, by any poll that I've seen, for people of all skin colours, uh, is deemed to be completely useless. Um, the, the Democrats have a real problem here. They can bang on about Trump all they like, but Trump's chances of being re-elected president increase with every gaffe that Biden makes and the knowledge that people have that if he's not able to run, which many people think is now increasingly unlikely, then is it even remotely feasible that Kamala Harris could beat Donald Trump? Absolutely not. And this whole thing about... I think one of them described it as soft bigotry, mm. right? If you say that Kamala Harris is underperforming, you are a soft bigot, whatever yeah. that means. I mean, I don't know how you can have sort of degrees of bigotry. Uh, but it reminded me a little bit of when I left my previous job, uh, hosting a morning show back in the yes. UK. You may remember I, I criticised Meghan Markle mm. for what I, I, I believe, let's be polite and just say that I said I wouldn't believe her if she'd read a weather report. Mm -hmm. right. And this was deemed to be racist, that the only reason I said that was because of her skin colour, which obviously was complete nonsense. This whole narrative building already, that if Joe Biden was to ditch Kamala Harris, anyone that thinks that that is a good idea is a racist, is ridiculous. How have we got to this place where criticism immediately is racist? It's the same with the 
trans debate, isn't it? We've talked about this many times. If you think a six foot four inch biological male should not be dominating women's swimming, you are a transphobe. It is ridiculous. Uh, so look, they've got big problems. I mean, I th if I were the Democrats, and I'm not, obviously, but if I was a, a, an American Democrat right now, I would be seriously worried. And I'd be thinking, we've got to get somebody in like Newsom or somebody like this, young, dynamic, breath of fresh air, something different. Otherwise, they are heading, I think, to a complete I, disaster. I loved how you quit, though, when you got up. The walkout. Yeah, and you said, I'm going to the pub. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfect. You know well, what? it was either that or I was going to chin. Are you familiar with the phrase chin? Well, you would be. You've been yeah. in England. Uh, chin, the guy that was just gobbing off about me. He was the... Chin, the guy that was gobbing off. Well, he was the, he was the deputy stand-in weather guy. Yes. <laughs> which is yes. not, it's not the loftiest pedestal from which to hurl his brickbats at me. Speaking of lofty pedestals, here's the vice president talking about her favourite topic, equity. Oh. There's an attack right now on diversity, equity and inclusion. Yes. Where supposed so-called extreme leaders are suggesting it's a bad thing to care about and pay attention to inequities. We must understand what are disparities and then accommodate and adjust for those disparities if we want equal outcomes. Okay, Judge Janine, your thoughts on Kamala Harris. Okay, uh, now you know why people don't like her. Yeah. Okay, I mean, what she just talked about was, I mean, equal outcomes. We have to, I think her exact words were in addition to what we said, but we have to accommodate and adjust for disparities and, and inequities. So I say to myself, well, wait a minute, does she mean that in terms of politics, like a, a race for president? Should we, um, you know, adjust for disparities? Like, think about, you know, if someone is running for president and if a minority in their eyes is running for president, should we make adjustments so that there is an outcome that recognizes that we needed to make adjustments for them? Hogwash. Nobody buys that. It's ridiculous. But it's what they believe in. She's a full-blown socialist. That's what they want. They want socialism. And that's why the Mammoth poll, the Fox poll, the CNN poll. I mean, her negatives are incredible. Here's the thing. If they're afraid because of whatever name on the view says, oh, we're never going to forgive you, Joe. Look, I don't think Joe's going to end up running. I think this week, and I've said it before on this show, the floodgates opened with, um, you know, with the opinion piece uh, where he shouldn't run the Washington Post and uh, Ignatius, uh, along with, you know, Nancy Pelosi not giving him a ringing endorsement. I really think that now is the beginning of the end. And if they want to, if they want Kamala Harris, let her get in the primary. Let's see how good she does. She had to drop out of the last primary for president. She did so poorly. So, you know what? Stop with the nonsense. We need someone. Now we know more than ever how this, you know, political identity and, and correctness has destroyed this country when you don't have someone who's willing to do the job. Piro says it. It's the beginning of the end. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.